Hey everybody, Scape211 here, and we are doing some more Mech Arena Basics, all right? And we're gonna be doing Gear Hub 3. Uh, I know a lot of you have been waiting for this one, so I wanted to get on it. Uh, but first, I wanted to just kind of show where my hangar was at before, and then kind of move forward. I did do a uh, free-to-play battle logs video, which I'll reference a couple times so that you can see kind of the progression from Tier 2 into Tier 3 a little bit, and how I did that, you know, um, you know, with a couple matches in mind. But um, I wanted to show where we were and where I'm going to be going. But I also wanted to say that moving forward for the rest of these gear hub videos, it's going to be more like this, where you're going to see most of the stuff that I got and then where I'm close to finishing the tier because trying to get and hoard all the resources for the given tier that I need is going to get harder and harder as things get more expensive as we move down these tiers. All right. Uh, it was easier to do for these first couple of tiers, but moving forward, man, I'm going to need to buy things and use them to effectively survive in that tier to move to the next one, just as any other player would. So uh, I'm just going to more so explain what I think are the key things to get and then the order in which I got them and like, you know, talk about some of the overall costs of things. All right, because I think all that's going to be important for everyone. All right, first of all, I wanted to say that right away, right here, uh, MD is one that may already be cycled out of your hangar or close to, because uh, whether you're in tier two or tier three, um, this guy is probably already not cutting it and you're going to be getting Arachnos for free anyway. So Arachnos would go here uh, and he would be one that has the long arm eights on it. All right, then from there, uh, we're going to start talking about the different things to get. All right, so let's go into the gear hub again. Uh, first of all, I want to talk about the most important things to get in the tier three uh, gear hub. All right. So I will say uh, Guardian is super duper key. Ares is also very key to get. Uh, those two are the most important as far as the Mexico. And then when it comes to weapons, man, really the strongest one, in my opinion, would be the Arc-6 to make sure you get. There are some other great weapons here as well that will be useful in the tier and then maybe moving a little forward. But the Arc-6, I think, is the one that will extend the furthest for most people. All right. So those are the three things I want everybody to keep in mind as key items to get. Those aren't necessarily going to be the first things you get, though, but I wanted to point those out. Um, as being key items, all right? So uh, with that said, let's talk about the order in which you should get things, at least what I think is a recommended order to go with. The first thing I would say you can get because he's not super expensive would be Ares, all right? Uh, credits wise, he is not too expensive. He's 112,500 credits. You can get that in a few days just playing casually um, or you know, probably even faster if you get a little bit more of like currency in different ways in the game. Um, or if you had some stocked up from the last tier, you might be able to get him right away. But he is going to be super helpful. You don't really have a good tank, uh, you know, up until now. He should be a fantastic tank, and he also can put a lot of pressure on stuff. Also really good in 2v2, 5v5, and free-for-all when you play those modes. He's going to be super helpful in those, all right? As far as uh, weapons to go right after that, I would say the first thing you probably want to get is the Pulse Cannon 6. Again, this is something that's really cheap. You have a lot of things that are 12-ish energy, um, and uh, the the Pulse Cannon 6 is very useful early on in Tier 3. I will say even as you move on through this tier, it will start to fall off, especially as you try to start saving up for the Missile Rack 6 and the Arc 6. These will definitely take place over that weapon. Um, but it's one that you can get pretty cheap early on and will be useful for helping you fill out your hangar. All right. Then after that, uh, because you just spent a lot of credits, I will hope that you have a decent amount of A coins and you can get Guardian next. All right. This is the biggest uh, A coin based thing that you need to get in tier three. The other A coin based stuff is not as important, but this is really the key one you need to make sure you get. Um, and hopefully you have, again, some leftover from the last tier. Uh, and since you haven't spent any in this tier or needed to yet, he is definitely one that is worth getting. Um, some may ask, why not Shadow? Well, really, the issue with Shadow is the energy, all right? Even though he is a star higher than Slingshot, has the same speed but better survivability, he still only has eight energy. And Slingshot already, for many, is going to start to feel like he just doesn't output the damage. Um, you know, survivability for him isn't bad for Slingshot shot depending on you know what you put on them i use jab so i can play keep away but um you know the survivability of shadow would of course be better but it's just again the damage is not strong enough as a scout if you feel like slingshot hasn't been cutting it and you have the resources you could get shadow i just don't think he's worth it long term so he's not one that i would recommend get it all right 
So, um, you know, Ares, the Pulse Cannon 6, and the Guardian, all right? Those are key ones to get. Now, I'm going to kind of switch up my hanger real quick here and show you what my hanger looks like uh, with, you know, that kind of stuff bought and I think what it would best look like right now. All right, so here is my hanger uh, so far. Um, now, obviously, uh, depending on what you have and what you spent, um, on different stuff, you may even have this other slot open. Uh, I was lucky enough to get some extra eight coins in the vault blitz to open it up. The reason I say that is because right now you're probably somewhere between two to three weeks into the game. So you're inevitably going to have a tourney where this is based on free for all. Right now it's a death match, but next week it will be free for all. And you cannot play free, fall at free for all at all unless you have five slots. So that's a debatable thing. There are some people that may feel like they don't want to spend the resources on the extra slot yet and uh, free-for-all is very difficult it's very competitive there's a lot going on and there are also some people who try to exploit different things so you may want to skip it it's definitely a controversial topic but the idea here is that if you want to do free-for-all you're gonna need to open that slot um, for this I would put a uh, slingshot here but before we have the eight coins for being able to do that this is where we sit all right um, now you'll notice that for these two uh, I have the dual shotgun type of setup again this is in my free-for-all battle Catalogs video, the shotgun bros. This just works so well for, you know, uh, team deathmatch, for uh, free for all, for 2v2, all those different modes. It also can work pretty good in CPC. I would say, you know, you could start with this guy, and then depending on if you need long range or short range for, you know, cabbing beacons or defending areas, debate on which one is going to work best for you. All right. This is kind of like a setup that I would say is a decent one. And then, of course, if you have that other slot, Slingshot could definitely go in there for that added speed that you need in CPC typically. All right. So this is kind of like the middle hanger, I would say, after you're getting some stuff. So let's move back to the gear hub and we're going to talk a little bit more about that kind of stuff. All right. So now that we have Guardian and Ares, we could probably just try to focus on the weapons. And I will say, really, the most important thing to get next, since most other things you need are credit based, would be the Arc Sixes. All right. Right? That's going to be a biggie. All right. Um, that one is a decent chunk. It's 282,500 credits. So you're going to be saving for a while. But the point here is that just about anything else is going to feel less than. All right. The Pulse Cannon 8s are not going to be great. You're not really going to be able to use them in a lot of places. Um, or, I mean, I would say you can put those on Arachnos or you can put those on Guardian if you feel like that's going to give you a nice stopgap. But it's just going to take you away from getting the credits you need for the Arc 6s. And I will say Arc 6 Ares like dominates pretty much in this tier, especially when you're talking about various modes, TDM, 2v2, uh, free for all. Those modes are dominated by the Arc 6 Ares. All right. It's even good in CPC, of course, when you can use it to put on pressure for stuff or defend like the center. Um, but it is, you know, definitely super duper strong. OK, so it's one that I think a lot of people are going to benefit from. Next to that, I would think would be the Missile Rack 6. Again, a big chunk of change. It's the same amount of credits, but it's one, again, that is probably the most important to get. After you get those two, then it kind of just boils down to what is going to be preference for you. You have the Long Arm 10, which you can get, which is super cheap, and that will help you just fill in a slot. You have the Pulse Cannon 8s, which were up above, which you can get. You could get each of those before these other items, but again, it's more so just the idea that these aren't going to necessarily help you a ton right away. They're just going to be cheap buys for you to help you finish through the tier. And I'm more so about getting the stuff that's going to help you survive more so than just like getting more stuff to fill in your tier and taking longer to get the stuff that you need to survive. So that's why I'm going in that order overall. All right. And then after that, um, you just have these different few options. I will say that the Helix 6 and the Nade 6, uh, both of them are just too expensive for what they provide. They're going to be pretty darn strong but um because they're epic basically but uh be the uh the issue is just that they cost a ton of a coins and for what they actually provide being a six energy weapon and being the cost that they are so high are just not justifiable to me all right so uh, those are ones that you can safely skip now the debate comes between these last two the javelin rack six and the rocket mortar eight these are the last two that most people are probably going to debate on you know which one is more important 
The, the Both of them have, I would say, temporary value. The Javelin Rack 6 has more immediate temporary value. The Rocket Mortar 8 has a little bit longer temporary value. These can go right away on a Rachnos and are useful in that sense. Um, these can go right away on like uh, Puma. And then as you move up into the next tier, these go great with like Stalker, okay? So um, both of them have different benefits. Um, I will say that the Rocket Mortar 8 has probably a little bit more potential because as you get over into this tier and you can get the Rocket Mortar 12, you may find that like a 20 energy build Build of a 12.8 is pretty viable. So I gotta say, I'm even somewhat second guessing not getting this and getting this instead. But this was cheaper and I really just wanted to move to the next tier. I don't really plan on using rocket mortars much at all, but I may change my tune. It really depends if I feel like I need them to survive later on because that sometimes happens to people. All right, so uh, this is what I went with though. All right, so really it's between these two. The difference in cost is only 58 coins, which is not much. So if you know, you're not sure which one to get, which one you think is gonna be better, I will say, you know, in terms of a little bit longer term value, the Rocket Mortar 8 may be the way to go. It's just that the Warheads are so small and weaker compared to the higher variants that uh, I just decided to skip it. But that is the overall progression I would say most people would go with, okay? Um, you know, you really don't have a whole lot of high costs in terms of eight coins. Um, it's really only about 1800, specifically 1800 and some change, depending on what you get. In terms of credits, you do need a good chunk of credits in this tier. This is probably the last one where you're going to need to do a heavier amount of credits than you do eight coins. Now, as you move further, it's going to start to level out and then push more into eight coins, I think, overall, as you move down these tiers. But the overall amount of credits you'll need for this tier is 822,550. So it's a decent chunk of credits overall, but that is like the overall feel of all of this, okay? So uh, since we've covered really everything that's going on, uh, I'm going to grab the Pulse Cannon 8s here as just our last item to get so that we can move up into the next tier, all right? Again, this is really just to fulfill the tier. I don't really even plan on using the Pulse Cannon 8s. Uh, I used to love this weapon, but it's just, you know, far less useful than it used to be. So let's just get it just so we can complete this tier. And there we go, we have finished this one. And now we can see that we open up the next one and now we can go back to the market to take a peek at this new one, okay? So if we go over to the mechs, you'll see that we have Stalker, Tengu, and Arachnos. And the benefit here is that we already have Arachnos. So we already have three stars connected to him, all right? Um, so we don't need to worry about getting him, which is nice. And I will say that Stalker is definitely one to get. Tengu is one that we can discuss. It's an interesting one for sure. Uh, then as we get into this stuff, um, you'll, you'll see these two, which are also interesting that we'll have to talk about more, uh, in the next gear hub video, the stasis beam eight, you'll see how expensive it is, but this is one that we can get for free and get three stars from, uh, because we got the derby for that. So that's really nice. And then you can get an idea of the cost of the rest of the items here. And we'll again, talk more about that in the next gear hub video. Okay. So there we have it, guys. That is the end of this video. I hope that was helpful for you. If there are certain things that you had questions about, you can comment below. The other comment I will make is that as I clear out these ads, I am going to be using a different account moving forward. I've had weird issues with this one um, on my computer, so I'm actually going to use a different one that is uh, currently further along in this next tier. So hopefully that means I come out with my next video sooner than I anticipated, but we'll see how it goes. It just gets harder as we go from here. But again, feel free to leave your comments or questions below and we will see you out there on the battlefield.